Spider-Man Web of Shadows was one of those games that as a kid I was very conflicted on whether I would even like it or not. It was released a little over a year after Spider-Man 3, and the last game was Friend or Foe, a beat-em-up that made Protector of Earth look like a masterpiece and made you team up with the villains, which is what made me a bit skeptical for a while because Web of Shadows seemed to be doing a similar thing from what I had seen about the game at the time. Obviously, I wouldn't be here talking about this game if I had the same feelings as I do about Friend or Foe, because I just literally have no interest in that game, and this one does the concept significantly better. On top of that, this game kinda does Spider-Man 3, but much better, and on a much larger scale. Which isn't really saying a whole lot, because Spider-Man 3 didn't really provide much either. With that being said, let's get into the story. This game is kinda weird with the story, because there are multiple endings, but the one you would think to make the most sense apparently isn't the true ending, so f consistency I guess. Seriously though, the game begins with Peter depression walking away from basically a war zone, just to swing to some random ass rooftop while hearing voices in his head. Which for Peter is kinda valid, that man has seen some shit. You beat up some symbiotes and meet up with NJ who is with Luke Cage for some reason, and they both hate you for literally no reason. Sadly I'm not even kidding. How they are even slightly mad at you at this point makes no sense. This is definitely where the morality system comes in later, but we haven't done anything yet. So them both just being pissed at you from the start makes no sense to me. Ending the scene, Peter gets jumped by a bunch of symbiotes as NJ and Cage fly away. This is the part where Peter begins to flash back and tell us how he got in this situation because we were all wondering. The whole series of events that cause this game's story starts with the introduction of Venom and the symbiote reproducing to give Peter another black suit. After the fight, Peter allows Eddie to escape and then follows MJ's ambulance to the hospital where a gang war takes place right outside the entrance. Obviously, this is where Luke Cage appears, stops the war, but then also starts teaching Peter how to improve his spider sense and a new attack called a web strike which is used as the main attack throughout the game. Honestly, the rest of the story is pretty much as straightforward as that. You help Luke stop a gang war brought on by the Kingpin, you chase Black Cat around the city for a while, fight Wolverine, fight Vulture, fight Electro, fight everyone again in their symbiote forms, help a convoy escape, use Rhino to help the Tinkerer escape from a prison, and obviously the game ends with you fighting a Kaiju Venom. For some reason. Don't get me wrong, it's cool, just doesn't make much sense why. Lastly, as I already said before, there are multiple endings to this game and that, in my opinion, is what gives the game a little replay value. You can either be the edgy guy, or the one everyone is really here for, and there are four different stories you can follow. The fully good line where you end with Eddie sacrificing himself after you lose the cool suit and MJ still follows you. The semi good ending where you make one bad choice and the only difference is MJ doesn't like you at the moment. The semi-bad ending where you make one good choice and everything goes to shit. You keep the cool suit and gain control of all the other symbiotes and have a bad attitude. And lastly, there's the really bad ending where everything is still the same except Black Cat follows you instead. Also in both bad endings, Wolverine as a symbiote again is called in to kill you off screen. I'll say this again because almost everybody probably forgot already, but there is only one true ending here. Can you guess which one it is? Cause I definitely didn't until having someone tell me. It's the first one where you use the symbiote to save Black Cat and turn anti-hero. Yes, in a Spider-Man game, that is the correct option. For some reason. I don't hate the story of this game, there's just a lot that makes no sense. Like how does Venom even get that big in the first place? I watched someone else review this a while ago, who was even more of a nerd than me, and they argued that this is impossible by the way the comics explain the character's abilities. So ever since I saw that video, I've been much more skeptical of this idea. Next, why do you fight Wolverine? He smells a symbiote on you and that is what starts the fight, but yet in the fight he asks you where you wore the suit the first time as a trivia question. So he also knows what these things are to a point, but also questions you whether you're the real Spider-Man or not. Third, how does Peter not know how to get the suit off if Venom is the main villain of this game? He clearly had to have taken it off at one point for Venom to even exist in this game, so the fact that he doesn't know is kinda weird. Lastly, why are there references to the Raimi movies in this game? I get it because this is like a year after the third movie was released, so it's like the, the movies are still popular, <laughs> so it makes sense. But it doesn't really make sense for Peter to be making these references, 
it make more sense if it was like Venom was designed off of the Spider-Man 3 movie or something like I don't know or even the suit being based off of it but the fact that they make references as the character it just doesn't fit at all. Once again the story isn't terrible there's just a lot of questions that were never answered. Next let's get into the mechanics. The gameplay is great in this one. While there isn't an uppercut like in Spider-Man 2 or the PS4 or remastered games, each version of Peter has different attack animations, such as the base suit having fire fists and multiple punching attacks, web balls, shoot at enemies, different web strike animations, etc. While the black suit has tendril attacks, explosions, axes, his basic attacks use claws instead, again, etc. The web swinging is the best in any Spider-Man game being much less controlled than the PS4 game, but also much more fun due to the speed you swing at and how high you can go being completely based on your control of the character. There is also fall damage, you can crash into walls, you can climb up the web while swinging, you can slide up or down a building instead of crawling, you can fight on walls, you can pole vault, you can web strike enemies to traverse. There's a lot to this game and it's arguably the best mechanics we have ever seen in the series. The closest being Spider-Man 2, but I think this game is a little overrated when comparing it to this game's mechanics. The only issue I ran into was, well first my Xbox is on its last leg so it chugged trying to load everything in this game and would freeze a lot, but also this whole game you have a symbiote. You basically start this whole series of events, but when they start putting up barriers that are meant to block out or even possibly kill the symbiotes, you can walk through them just fine. I don't know why anyone thought someone wouldn't overthink this eventually, but god did they not even try to hide it. Also this big mech guy was reused from Spider-Man 3. It's not that big of a deal for me, I just think it's funny that this game is so good at using its own assets, aside from the city, then just one character appears and puts everything up. <laughs> the graphics for this game are kinda mid. Characters like MJ, Luke, Vulture, Fisk, Natasha, etc. look alright if not good. But then there are characters like Wolverine, Electro, Rhino, and Venom, base and kaiju form, who look great. On the other hand, the worst looking character in this game is sadly Red Suit Spider-Man. I don't know exactly what it is other than the eyes just look really weird. I don't know if it's also the color and texture of the suit, but to me it just looks so off. Ending this video, I want to say regardless of the issues I have with this game, I love it. They added just enough that it doesn't feel overcrowded but also were able to use ideas such as the web strike and seamless switching between suits, while also including multiple endings to keep people interested. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, hit the subscribe and bell buttons. They're completely free and are really just a better way to keep up with new videos. Also, if for some reason you want these videos a couple days to a week early if I can manage it, we just got members added to the channel. For a dollar a month, you can get videos early amongst other perks I'm still trying to decide on. So if you'd like to go above and beyond and would like the extra perks, hit the join button as well. Also if you'd like an even better way to keep up, I also have a link to my Discord server in the description. It's also probably on the screen right now. That should wrap things up. So again, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video.